Good morning and welcome to St. Peter Cathedral on this, the 31st Sunday of Ordinary Time. A book study leading to Marian consecration will begin November 2nd and conclude December the 7th. The hour-long class will be held Tuesdays at 5.45 p.m. in the St. Therese room on the middle level. Please sign up on the bulletin board or call the parish office. The book, 33 Days to Morning Glory, will be available for $5 for at the classes. All Saints' Day Masses tomorrow will be held here at 8 a.m., 12.10 p.m., and 5.30 p.m. All Souls' Day Masses on Tuesday at the normal 8 a.m. and 5.15 Mass times. There will also be a special Memorial Mass at Holy Cross Cemetery Chapel on Tuesday at, two, at, at 6 p.m. That is on Tuesday, November the 2nd at 6 p.m., a Memorial Mass at Holy Cross Cemetery Chapel. Our principal celebrant for this morning's liturgy is His Excellency Bishop John Durfler. Concelebrating is our pastor, Monsignor Michael Sieber. Deacon Lou Lando will proclaim the gospel and assist at the altar of sacrifice. Deacon Greg St. John, his master of ceremonies. Our opening hymn is number 515, 515 in the diocesan hymnal, This Day God Gives Me, number 515. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess. Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask bless Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, Fear the Lord your God, and keep throughout the days of your lives all his statutes and commandments which I enjoin on you, and thus 
have long life. Hear then, Israel, and be careful to observe them, that you may grow and prosper the more, in keeping with the promise of the Lord, the God of your fathers, to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Therefore, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Take to heart these words which I enjoin on you today. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. my Savior. I love you, I love you, Lord, my strength. My God, my rock, where I take refuge, my shield, my saving strength, my stronghold, I cry out, praised be the Lord. And see, I am saved from my foes. I love you, I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock. May the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord gives great victories to his king and shows merciful love for his anointed. I love you, I love you, Lord, my strength. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, the Levitical priests were many because they were prevented by death from remaining in office. But Jesus, because he remains forever, has a priesthood which does not pass away. Therefore, he is always able to save those who approach God through him, since he lives forever to make intercession for them. It is fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners higher than the heavens. He has no need, as did the high priests, to offer sacrifice day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. He did that once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints men subject to weakness to be high priests. 
But the word of the oath, which was taken after the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all commandments? Jesus replied, the first is this, hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher. You are right in saying, He is one and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he, he answered with understanding, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. I wish to take a moment to acknowledge the Knights and Ladies of the Holy Sepulchre who are gathered here this morning for their annual celebration of Mass with the Bishop. And also, thank you so much for your support of the Church in the Holy Land. Indeed, how important it is for all of us to be mindful of our brothers and sisters in Christ who live in this land and the support and encouragement that they need from all of us. And in a particular way, this order of the Holy Sepulchre is dedicated to that most important work, so thank you. Autumn is 
one of my favorite times of year. The colors that we have here in the Upper Peninsula are just truly beautiful. And I've really been very happy that the weather has been so nice this autumn. It's been rather mild. And it's provided a wonderful opportunity just to be outside a bit more and just reflect on how beautiful things are. Isn't it a privilege for us just to take a moment and pause out of our busy lives and just reflect upon the beauty that surround us? And so I'd like to take this moment right now to pause and reflect upon the beauty that is around us in this celebration of Holy Mass. How important it is for us not to just rush through the time we spend here, but to reflect and contemplate the beauty that we celebrate here. In our second reading today from the letter to the Hebrews, we hear that Jesus is a fulfillment of the sacrifices of the Old Testament. It says, he had no need as did the high priest to offer sacrifice day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. He did that once for all when he offered himself. So in Old Testament times, it was the practice for the Old Testament priests to offer sin offerings. But these were just a foretaste of the one perfect offering of Jesus Christ on the cross when he shed his blood for our salvation, when he offered himself for our sins. And the mystery of this offering is made present every time we celebrate Holy Mass. For when the priest says the very words of Jesus at the Last Supper, mere bread and wine are changed into the body and blood of Christ, and this one sacrifice of Calvary is made present here. Because the sacrifice of Jesus is so powerful that it transcends space and time. And so we are ever present in this sacrifice when Holy Mass is offered and Jesus is given to us in the Holy Eucharist. But there's more to it than that. Because when we celebrate Mass, the Lord Jesus invites each and every one of us to become partakers in his one perfect sacrifice. He invites each and every one of us to share in this offering. And we do so in the Mass. Now let's reflect on some words of the Second Vatican Council in this regard. The Council stated, for all their works, prayers, and apostolic endeavors, their ordinary married and family life, their daily occupations, their physical and mental relaxation if carried out in the spirit, and even the hardships of life if patiently borne, all these become spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So think about your life when I read these words again. For all their works, 
prayers and apostolic endeavors, their ordinary married and family life, their daily occupations, their physical and mental relaxation if carried out in the spirit, and even the hardships of life if patiently borne. All these become spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And then the council continues and relates all of this to the Mass. Together with the offering of the Lord's body, they are most fittingly offered in the celebration of the Eucharist. Thus, as those everywhere who adore in holy activity, the laity consecrate the world itself to God. So think about all these aspects of your life, your work, your marriage and family life, your joy, your recreation, your hardships, all of these things are meant to be offered to the Lord, offered to the Father, along with our Lord Jesus Christ offered on this altar. Together with the offering of the Lord's body, they are most fittingly offered in the celebration of the Eucharist. Thus is those everywhere who adore in holy activity, the laity consecrate the world itself to God. So this is how you do this when you come to celebrate Mass. Don't let this opportunity come by, just go pass by. When the altar is being prepared in, in just a few minutes, think about what's gone on in your life this last week. Think of the work that you've done and place it on this altar. Think of the family life in which you've been engaged this last week and place it on this altar. Think about your joy and your recreation that you've had this week and place it on the altar. Think about some of the frustrations and difficulties that you've had and place it on the altar. Do all this when when the gifts are being prepared. Get ready to offer this to the Lord so that you may consecrate the world itself to God. And then when it comes to the Eucharistic prayer, all of this that you have prepared is offered to the Father along with the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And to help illustrate this, I'd ask you to take out your hymnals for a moment. And I'd ask you to turn to page 34. And I'd like to look at some of the words of one of the Eucharistic prayers because it's so easy just to let some of these words slip by and miss their beauty and their significance. So this is page 34 in the hymnal, and this is the third Eucharistic prayer which I will be using today. And the text we'll be looking at comes right after the consecration And let's look at the bottom of sort of that first paragraph that we see here. The priest says, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
This, of course, refers to the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus, his sacred body and blood, which we are offering to the Father. And it also pertains to the sacrifice that you prepared of your whole week, of your whole life to the Lord. Your work, your recreation, your family, your joys, your sorrows. This is part of this spiritual sacrifice you now offer to the Father along with the body and blood of Jesus. And in doing so, you consecrate the world to God. This is what's going on in this prayer. And then look at the next line at the beginning of the next paragraph. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church. We're asking the Father then to look at this offering that we're making. Look upon it. Look upon the offering of the Son that we are offering to you. Look upon this consecration of the world that we are offering to you. And then look at the beginning of the third paragraph. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect. Think of the beauty of this prayer and the spiritual significance of what is happening every time we celebrate Mass. Mere bread and wine are changed into the body and blood of Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then you consecrate the world to God by offering your spiritual sacrifices along with the Lord's body and blood. Don't just let these words of this prayer just pass you by without making that offering of yourselves, without making that offering of your life, without making that offering of the world. And if we were to take time to look at the other Eucharistic prayers, after the consecration, you will find different expressions of an offering, of a sacrifice. That what has just happened in light of the consecration of the bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus, this is all offered along with ourselves, along with the world to the Father. What a beautiful spiritual exercise we engage in. What depth and what richness is here. That the Lord invites us to share in his offering. And by doing so, you consecrate the world to God. So I invite you, as we get ready to prepare this altar soon after the profession of our faith and our general intercessions, don't let this golden opportunity go by. Don't rush by without looking at the beauty that is here. Offer your life to the Lord along with the sacrifice of his body and blood and consecrate the world itself to God.
Let us join together in our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us call upon the Lord whose help is near, whose kindness is great. For our Holy Father, our Bishop, our priests, and the staff of this parish, we pray to the Lord. For the elimination of this pandemic and famine and for peace throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. For members of this community of faith and those preparing to become members, we pray to the Lord. For our nation, state, and local officials, we pray to the Lord. For the unemployed, the hungry, and the homeless, and those ill or injured, we pray to the Lord. For those that are lost in addiction or alcohol, drug, and gambling, we pray to the Lord. For the members of this community and their loved ones who have died, receive the abundant fruit of God's presence. Mary Ann Kublin, Jack Ledbetter, Helen Lack, Daniel Miller, Kenneth Chekelwitz, Mary Beckland, Robert Vick, Michael Cardoni, Terry Britton, Daniel Rettek, Retke, Karstoff Kapalowitz, James Alderson, Armand Nunez, Patrick Everson, Mary Beth Malloy, Tim Lee, Shirley Labonte, Joyce Hernandez Coleman. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For the parish family of St. Peter Cathedral, and St. Mary Mission, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, our need for your mercy is great, but your love for us and all people is far greater. Hear and answer the prayers we have presented to you this day. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Please join in singing our preparation hymn, which can be found at number 472 in the diocesan hymnal, where charity and love prevail at number 472 in the diocesan hymnal. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation, and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift them up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Peter, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and me your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you in their pa at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Please join in singing our communion hymn, which can be found at number 425 in the diocesan hymnal, I Have Loved You, at number 425 in the diocesan hymnal.
let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Walk out for the blessing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Act of Consecration to St. Joseph. O glorious Patriarch and Patron of the Church, O Virgin Spouse of the Virgin Mother of God, O Guardian and Virginal Father of the Word Incarnate, in the presence of Jesus and Mary, we, the clergy, religious, and lay faithful of the Diocese of Marquette, choose you this day to be our Father, Guardian, and Protector. O great Saint Joseph, whom God has made the head of the Holy Family, accept us, we beseech you, though utterly unworthy, to be members of your Holy House. Present us to your Immaculate Spouse. Ask her also to adopt us as her children. With her, pray that we may constantly think of Jesus and serve him faithfully to the end of our lives. O terror of demons, increase in us virtue. Protect us from the evil one and help us not to offend God in any way. O spiritual Father, we hereby consecrate the Diocese of Marquette to you. In faithful imitation of Jesus and Mary, we place all our concerns under your care and protection. To you, after Jesus and Mary, we consecrate our bodies and souls with all their faculties, our spiritual growth, our homes, and all our affairs and undertakings. Forget us not, but adopt us as servants and children of the Holy Family. Watch over us at all times, but especially at the hour of our death. Console and strengthen us with the presence of Jesus and Mary, so that with you, we may praise and adore the Holy Trinity for all eternity. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy.
have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, of the Mother of God. Pray for us. Guardian of the Redeemer. Defender of Christ, pray for us. Servant of Christ, pray for us. Minister of Salvation, pray for us. Head of the Holy Family, pray for us. Joseph. Most just, Joseph, most chaste, Joseph, most prudent, Joseph, most brave, Joseph, most obedient. Joseph most loyal, mirror of patience, lover of poverty, model for workers, glory of family life. Support in difficulties. Pray for us. Comfort of the sorrowing. Pray for us. Hope of the sick. Pray for us. Patron of exiles. Pray for us. Patron of the afflicted. Patron of the poor, pray for us. Patron of the dying, pray for us. Terror of demons, pray for us. Protector of the Holy Church, pray. Take away the sins of the world. Hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. He made him master of his house. And 
Let us pray. O God, who in your inexpressible providence were pleased to choose Saint Joseph as spouse of your most holy mother, grant, we pray, that we who revere him as our protector on earth may be worthy of his heavenly intercession, who live and reign forever and ever. Let us now conclude our consecration by reciting together the prayer that Pope Francis has promulgated for the year of St. Joseph. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you, God entrusted his only Son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, Show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. Please join in singing our closing hymn, which can be found at number 381 in the diocesan hymnal. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. At number 381, we will be singing verses 1 and 3.